Welcome viewers and subscribers. Welcome back to another video. This is JK Engineering Architecture coming to you again with another engineering video. So as promised, I did mention to you that I am going to go over how to calculate the maximum bending moments on a cantilever beam with a UDL and also a point load. In previous videos, I have demonstrated to you how to calculate the maximum bending moment for a uniform distributed load on a beam and as well as a point load on a beam. So this week's video is to calculate the maximum bending moment on a beam as it relates to a uniform distributed load and a point load. But just before I get into the actual presentation, I just want to give you a little background concept or a background knowledge of what a cantilever is. Now, if you look around, when you observe a building with a slab roof, the portion of that slab roof that overhangs the building that is known as a cantilever and if you look around some more you will observe that some building is built with a cantilever balcony the cantilever balcony whenever time you see the balcony is projected outwards with no support from the ground coming up that is a cantilever balcony also you can put your upper floor on the cantilever cantilever slab that goes around the building so cantilever is very important to understand and not many people know how to properly reinforce a cantilever beam so these videos are to educate you how to do that as well so a cantilever a cantilever is a structural member on a, on, a, on, on a construction project or a bridge of when you observe that one end is always fixed and the other end is free that mean uh, that mean on the free end there is no vertical support that support the free end there's no vertical support here to support the free end So, one end is fixed and the other end is free. And because we have one end that is fixed, you're going to end, end up at what is called a moment. So, a moment is going to be right here. So, we call that a fixed end moment. Now, now let's just look at this beam, this cantilever beam here. This cantilever beam here have, have a uniform distributed load of W. So as I've indicated to you before that when we are converting, when we want to find the reaction, we have to convert the UDL into a point load to find the reaction. So if you observe the diagram on the right, I have converted this this uniform distributed load as of weight per foot into weight W times L because this really so the length of this beam here is really L so we calculate the uniform distributed load into a point load by multiplying W times L and we end up with double L. And because it is a uniform distributed load, the resultant of that uniform distributed load is going to be at the center or at mid span. So this is similar to what I've done before. There's nothing different. So since the UDL is acting at mid span, half 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 the length is going to be L over 2 and half the, the length on the opposite side is going to be L over 2 right so with a cantilever 
you're only going to end up with one reaction. So if it is WL here acting on the beam, the reaction here is going to be WL. So let me show you now how to calculate the bending moment or, the, or, or how to derive the formula to calculate the maximum bending moment. So if we should draw our bending moment and our shear force diagram, so this is our shear force, and this line here is known as zero. At the top we have plus and at the bottom we have our minus. So when as I mentioned to you before, whenever time we are doing our shear force, we have to go back to the original diagram. We just merely convert the UDL into a point load just to come up with the reaction. So the our shear force, because we have a if a reaction here of WL right so we're going to go up let me use a different so the reaction here is going to be WL the reaction here is going to be WL so we're going to go up we have a, we have a reaction here going up of WL, so WL is going to come right here or we can put it right here right and because the beam is because imagine a beam like this so if we have a four if we have a uniform distributing load on the beam like this spreading up spreading across the beam like this with a reaction going up it's going to tilt the beam like this Right, so our shear force is going to look something like this, and of course, this distance is going to be L. And then our bending moments now, our bending moment is going to look something like this. Curve to the point right here. So our maximum bending moment is going to be right here. So similarly, as in the case of my previous examples, to calculate the, the, the maximum bending moment is going to be the area of this triangle. So the area of this triangle. So the moment, the moment, the maximum bending moment, the maximum bending moment is going to equal to the area of this triangle. So our bending moment is going to equal to the area of triangle. Right? And the area of triangle is half base times height. So our maximum bending moment is going to equal to a half the base, the base which is going to be L, and the height which is going to be WL. So this is going to equal to 1 times L times WL is WL squared over 2. So a half times L times WL is going to equal to WL squared over 2. So a moment, a moment is going to equal to WL squared over 2. So to find the maximum bending moment of a cantilever beam with a uniform distributed load is going to be WL squared over 2. 
So when we are going to calculate our reinforcement to go into this cantilever beam, we, we simply just calculate WL square over, over 2 and plug that in our formula to calculate the area of steel for our cantilever beam. So in this segment of my presentation, I'm going to demonstrate to you how to calculate the maximum bending moment for a point load on a cantilever beam. So if you observe the figure, the diagram to the left on my, on my screen, you will observe that this cantilever has a column at the end. And this column is of some weight W, right? So oftentimes when you look on a building with a cantilevered balcony, you will see it has column at the, at the end just to give the building or just to enhance the aesthetical looks of the building. So just imagine this to be a column with some weight W, right? So we're going to have this at some distance L. So as I've mentioned to you before, and just to reinforce, a cantilever only has one reaction. And the reaction is going to be at the fixed end and not at the free end. And let me re-establish re that the free end of the cantilever is the end without any vertical support coming from the ground. So if we have W coming down here, we have W going back up. And this weight of W here coming down must be equal to the weight of W here going up for the cantilever beam to be in equilibrium or what is known as to establish stability. Any, structure, any structural system that is not stable is going to be subjected to failure. And we don't want that. So, what I can do now, since we know that W is going down and W is going up at the, at the fixed end, I can now quickly calculate the or derive the formula for the bending moment. So, if you look at it here, so here we have the cantilever beam. So this is a cantilever here. And of course, just to reinforce again, because this end is fixed, it's gonna it's gonna have a moment right here. I'll, I'm gonna get to that when I'm gonna do some real design of a cantilever beam, right? So our shear force diagram is going to look something like this. So our shear force, shear force plus minus, and of course the reaction here is going to be W, and the reaction and the load coming down here is going to be W. So at this end we have a reaction of W. So let me fix this a little bit. This is too close. So I'm going to carry down this a little bit more. So the reaction. So we have double going up like this. W. And because the point load is acting here, so it's going to continue right along and come back down like this. This side is also going to equal to W. So we have W going up, W coming down. And this W must be equal to this W. So our shear force diagram is going to look something like this. And then our bending moments diagram now is going to look something like this. So 
straight line. So a bending moments diagram is going to look something like this. So to calculate, to calculate the, the moment, as in the case before, the moment is going to equivalent to this, to the shape here, to this rectangle. Right? So the moment is going to equal to the area of the shear force diagram, which is a rectangle. So we have so this length of course is going to be L and this length is going to be L. So the moment is simply going to be W times L because length times width is the area of a rectangle. So it's going to be W L. So our moment our moment is going to equal to W L for a point load acting at the end of a cantilever beam. Now, as I've stated it to you before, the importance of calculating the moment, the importance of that is that we're going to use this formula to calculate the moment. So when we are working out our area of steel, the result of this can the result of this can goes into the formula to calculate the area of steel but what i'm doing now i'm doing structural analysis so when i get into structural design you're going to see the importance of calculating the moment so i have gone over the Calculation of the bending moment for a uniform distributed load on a beam. And, I, uh, and I've also gone over to calculate, calculate the uniform, the maximum bending moment for a point load on a beam. And now I have shown you how to calculate the uniform distributed load as well as the point load for a cantilever beam. So my next video... I am going to teach you how to find the reaction of a beam with a load that is not on center, right? So as I said to you before, you can use the formula to calculate the maximum bending moments on a beam system when the load is acting at the center. But if the load is acting off center, then you have to find your reaction and plot your shear force as well as your bending moments diagram to derive the formula or to derive the answer to the maximum bending moment so, I, so that you can use it to calculate the area of steel. So stay tuned for my next video. My next video is just as interesting as the previous ones as it relates to structural analysis because I'm going to give you, as I said, you know, a comprehensive or somewhat of a comprehensive understanding of what goes on in structural engineering as it relates to beam design. So take care. I hope you enjoy the videos i'm doing thus far ensure to watch the videos to the end if you are new to my channel please remember to hit the subscription button as well as the thumbs up button to give me a like take care enjoy yourself and enough respect thank you